So Ingo Swan and Harold Sherman, another famous psychic, uh, and we, we, we taped the, uh, taped the ex experiments, remote viewed Jupiter before the flyby. Uh, Swan said, I wonder if I went to the wrong place. I see some thin rings around Jupiter. Maybe I went to Saturn by mistake, but no, I couldn't have done that because there's the big red uh, tornado thing. And so he reported thin rings. And so right after that, uh, Carl Sagan happened to come by SRI. And so we showed him the data. And he said, no, I'm not impressed. First of all, I see a bunch of stuff in here that you, know, you can get out of any encyclopedia. And then I see stuff here that's clearly wrong, rings around Jupiter, no rings around Jupiter. So we actually published that in our book, MindReach, before the flyby got there. When the flyby got there, the big news was thin rings around Jupiter. <laughs> and uh, so based on that, they also, uh, he also did a remote viewing of Mercury before a flyby and described a number of things that the astrophysicist, uh, uh, cosmologist didn't expect to see, and it turned out he was right. So they're, they're in the public literature. As far as the microscope activity, we didn't, at least in our lab, but there's a very famous book uh, out of early 1900s where uh, Leadbeater and Besant, famous psychics of the day, remote viewed elements in the periodic table and came up with detailed descriptions uh, which included noting that there was deuterium and tritium which we didn't know about at the time and models that some physicists feel match quark models. Um, so that's also, that's published as a book so you can get that data. Um, there are uh, many of the ex-intelligence uh, people have retired and they teach remote viewing courses and so um, you can go on the web, find out courses, take the courses from them and then be your own remote viewer. As far as hiring remote viewers, I, I, I don't know, I don't keep up with uh, you know, what they might do. Okay, I know it's getting late so I think we probably have to wind. One, one last question. No, we didn't. <laughs> How do we choose our remote viewers since we probably didn't go to the yellow pages, psychic yellow pages? Well, originally, uh, well, you saw how we got Swan. Geller was recommended, so we took him in. He got 90% of the publicity, even though he was like 1% of our work. But uh, in the Army, they found that uh, some remote viewers, the way they selected some of their remote viewers, were that there were certain people that the troops would follow out into the fields in Vietnam because they would never get blown up by landmines. And so the Army chose some of those people and sent them our way. But then uh, we also found out that uh, by having volunteers, that many of them uh, who never thought about having psychic functioning, like Helen Hammond, happened to be at SRI for some other experiments, never thought of herself as a psychic. She turned out to be absolutely wonderful. So uh, eventually we did a massive profiling system and uh, it's used by the CIA and uh, have a 256 cubbyhole, 16 by 16, of 256 separate kinds of personalities. And there were two cubbyholes in there that sort of uh, where our best remote viewers came from. So, but by and large I would say you don't have to go that, that far. Essentially everybody has the ability. Our view is that it's normally distributed, just like musical ability. You've got virtuosos at one end of the scale, you've got tone deaf people at the other end, and you've got a bell curve, and most people are somewhere in the bell curve, can learn some music, and can learn to do remote viewing. So I think that, that's all you need to know about finding remote viewers. Thanks. <laughs>
your email up at address off to us.